How's it going, folks? This is Antoine with Core Cutter Lifestyle and Tech, and today we're going to be going over how to properly make a coaxial cord or and or make your coaxial connection, however you want to put it. How to make your own cable jumper? You know that way you don't have to go to Walgreens or Walmart late at night to and pay fifteen dollars for a three foot long coaxial cord RG fifty nine at that. You know, so. We all have cable laying around, whether you know it or not. Trust me, that cable got left some some coaxial laying in your attic. So <laughs> just go upstairs and check in your installation. I'm pretty sure you got probably a hundred feet of coaxial laying up there somewhere. So what you're gonna need is some coaxial cord. Now make sure you're not using RG59. RG59 is that real thin coaxial cord. I mean, it's great for some applications, but just to be on the safe, especially with today's high definition MPEG-4 technology, you want to make sure you're using MPEG. I mean, I'm sorry, you make sure you want to use an RG6. Now, especially if you're mounting an antenna outside, you want to make sure you have the best protection and um, a tri-shield RG6 is going to give you good connection or dual shield or even better if you have if you manage to find some of that 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 cost cord the cable got left in your attic you know most likely it's going to be quad shield so you go ahead and use that you know make sure you have the proper cable and also you want to make sure you have a, a compression connector you don't want to use the the crimp style connectors Especially if you're using an outdoor antenna, or if you, or if you're going to be using it in a place where there's going to be moisture, because when you crimp a connector, you kind of mess up its um, its outline, right? So this was circular before. When you take a crimping tool, you you kind of square it off, or you pinch that cable down, and you kind of mess up the um, the inners of it. And then when you do it this way, right, it's not really sealed from any outside moisture, so. You want to get you a compressed fitting, and also don't, I mean, unless you have to, you know, I understand that these things are, it's, it's new to people, and people tend to just go to a store and say, I need to make me a coaxial cord right quick, and they might hand you some, one of those screw-on connectors. I mean, they're good for short term, but I wouldn't recommend using them outside because they won't hold the cord, for example, with this crimp connection right here, I mean, I could just slowly pull on it, slowly pull on it, slowly pull on it, and it's eventually going to come out. Or the the thread is going to go far back. I mean, I'm sorry, but the um the wire is going to be pulled so far back that this stinger in the middle is not going to be making a connection. So as you can see, I was able to pull that stinger back. Let's see if we can get a, a view on it. So I don't know if you guys can see that, that copper thing sticking up with these you can pull it back and it's gonna you know it's just gonna lose connection so I mean we just try to go over the um the basics of what the professional use so what you're gonna need is your stripping tool and when you go out to buy a stripping tool make sure it has both the blades you have one blade that's up higher than the other one and I'm gonna show you guys why it's like that and then you're gonna need a compression tool now I got these laying over here. These are just different ways you can strip your coax. I mean, if you got a steady hand and you know exactly what you're doing, you probably can use this. Now, this one I got from Harbor Freight, and so did this one. I got this one from Harbor Freight as well. But this one has only a single blade, so it's not going to strip the wire the way you want it to. And let me show you right here just to get into it right here. So when you strip into your coax, so you want to put it in there then you want to turn it just look at the arrow in there so it says go up and over so we're going to go up and over and what it does is when you using the right stripping tool it takes both layers off that you need so we needed to take off one this black layer and then we need to take off that whole diode center for um, another half of that portion that we stripped off that way you could just go ahead and pull it back now, one thing you must absolutely make sure is that none of this wire is wrapped around that because that will completely mess your whole system up. Whatever you're doing is not going to work properly just because these, this is not supposed to mix with that. These two are not supposed to mix or touch each other. If they do, you can get an arc, you can get a spark on. So definitely don't want to want that to happen. So just inspect your wire. Make sure that none of that is touching. And also... 
you want to make sure when you're using a, a stripping tool like this, you want to make sure that it's flush. You want to make sure it's flush just like that because you don't want to just slap it on there any way, right? Oh, going the wrong way. I'm left-handed, so because see right here, we got this extra long stinger that we can't do nothing with. You go to slap a cable on there, you're not paying attention. You know, that's going right in your finger. Trust me, those things hurt for a couple days. But you see that? You don't want to have your stinger that long because that will damage whatever it's going into. So, I mean, that's just a tip for you guys. And But, yeah, just, you know, make sure you strip it, you know. Just line it up with your stripping tool. And if and if you're not using a professional a professional type stripping tool like that, you know, if you're gonna use something like this, just make sure you got like half half of the diode, half and half. That way you'll be on the safe side. And then when you go in and put your connector on, you wanna make sure that you line it up to what so if you feel any kind of pressure, right? If you feel any kind of feedback, you want to just stop because most likely you're probably digging into that diode, which is going to completely degrade, you know, it's going to mess everything up. You, you're better off starting over, making sure you get a perfect circle. That's why it's best to use a stripping tool because if you use anything, say you wanted to use something like this, you're going to, you're going to flatten that diode. It's no longer going to be circular. And then you're going to go to put your connector on and you're going to be jamming it into that center diode and you're just going to be messing all up. None of this is supposed to be inter interrupted. That foyer around that diode, now that braid, you're supposed to pull that back, you know. And also, you don't want to make this too long because if this is too long and sticking out, you again, you're going to have interference. You're going to have a, a avenue for water or moisture to get into your cable. Then that's just going to corrode it. And then it's just going to go all the way back down to your wire and straight up to your receiver. Trust me, I've seen it where people had water. You know, I go to take the connector off and water just starts squirting out. We're talking about on the inside. The water is going to make its way back to the um, to your receiver. So just make sure everything's tight, especially with your connector. I mean, it seems uh, minuscule, such, you know, such of a... Uh, a mundane task that it don't seem that important, but this is the most important part of any any installation. You know, you want to make sure your connections because you I mean you can do everything perfect. Your antenna could be mounted perfect, but if you have a bad connector, you're not going to be getting signal. You're not going to be getting the right amount of channels. So you want to make sure that this white diode is flush with the center. See if we got that. Make sure that's flush with the center. If it's all squared off or ovaled off or you kind of cut into it, go ahead and do it over. Just just do it over. That way you don't have any problems in the future. You don't want it back like that. You just want it flush. And you want to make sure that your stinger is like the with like a dime width above the uh, the top of the connector. Because when you think about it, let's pull this off for a second. So this is your this is your television port or whatever, any type of box you want it to. That stinger is about the right length to go into your television or whatever device you're connecting to. That's the perfect length right there. So anything longer, so for example, like this, you take something like this, you go ahead and you jam it down there and there. That portion right there is all up in your TV, messing messing everything up. So, you know, just make sure you have everything lined up. Get that on there. Make sure it's flush, you know. And we have our compression tools. Uh, this one is a compression tool. I'll put a link to these compression tools in the description. I also put a link to, uh, I mean, you can just head up to Harbor Freight, but I also put a uh, Amazon link for a compression tool. Um, this one had to be adjusted, so I had to calibrate it, which took me like 10 minutes. You know, you have to test it out and calibrate it, test it out to calibrate it. So crimping tools, these are professional grade crimping tools right here. Um, they're pretty, pretty simple. 
you go in at an angle and you stick your stinger in a hole it's a hole in there you stick your stinger in there and you just compress it so that's going to give you a watertight seal and as you can see with this you can't pull that down you know you probably can hang 200 pounds off of that you probably can string yourself up and hang from this one connector so these crimp connectors no professional should be using this on outdoors when it's you know especially if it's in a moist climate snow where it's getting harsh weather snow a lot of rain stuff like that moisture is just going to get up in there you know um, and it's just going to corrode it it can possibly damage your TV because once this thing starts to corrode and these metals start touching each other the outside layer with the braided line once these two this braided line and this stinger once they start touching each other because of corrosion because when this corrode this just just disappears fall apart goes back in there all of this just corrodes and trust me I've, I've seen a lot out in the field but that is it folks if you have any questions on tools or any type of coaxial tricks or anything like that um, hit me up in the comment section and um, yeah that's it I'll talk to you guys next time